very important topic the leaf fold fractures leaf fold fractures so we have dealt with the nasal bone fracture we have dealt with the zygomatic fractures we have dealt with the blowout fractures and this is a very important topic the leaf fold fracture leaf fold fracture very important questions for your for your neat exams leaf fold fractures okay and for your prefrontal also so leaf fold fractures are nothing but it is a fracture of a mid face fracture of the mid face again fracture of the mid face okay uh, so here it is a three dimensional fracture not a single one and some exams in some neat exams they will even give a point of fracture of the maxilla also since uh, since it, uh, it involves the maxilla and the mid face okay the fracture of the mid face or fracture of the maxilla this is for your exams but the ideal thing is fracture of the mid face so what happens is what happens is there are three types of leaf foot fractures leaf foot fractures are a complicated one not a simple one are complicated usually following a severe trauma following a road traffic accident okay there are three types of leaf foot fractures type 1 2 and 3 okay then type 1 type 1 leaf foot fracture is say this is type 1 okay here the fracture line starts from one maxilla okay the patient had a road traffic accident following which he had a fracture of the maxilla a fracture line starts from one maxilla one maxilla it goes up to the it goes it extends extends up to the it uh, extends up to where it goes it extends up to the tip of the nose it, it's not entering into the nose it goes up to the tip of the nose not exactly here it goes up to the tip of the nose that is this area the piriform aperture area it starts from here runs up to the nose okay it, it won't go to the roof it will go up to the piriform aperture area okay enters into the nose and then and then the fracture line runs through the other side extends up to the up to the maxilla on the other side okay and this never ends here it will make a three dimensional orientation that is at the back side it will make a three dimensional alignment it will break it will break the pterygoid plates at the back will break the pterygoid plates at the back and then and then comes back comes back so it is almost a three dimensional cut it is almost a three dimensional cut so the type 1 fractures type 1 leaf foot fractures are not much complicated okay but it starts from the maxilla goes up to the nasal uh, piriform aperture and goes to the uh, nasal uh, maxilla on the other side and it almost cuts the goes to the pterygoid plate and bisects the skull bisects the base of the skull okay so this is called as type 1 fractures type 1 fractures are also called as transverse fractures otherwise called as Guerin's fracture a very very important MCQ Guerin's fracture okay so type 1 type 1 fractures type 1 leaf foot fractures are otherwise called as transverse fractures otherwise called as Guerin's fracture okay so this is leaf foot type 1 so coming on to type 2 coming on to type 2 and type 2 fracture and type 2 fracture say again there is a fracture uh, fracture in the mid face so type 2 fractures are a bit dangerous not a very dangerous so here the fracture line starts from the maxilla okay starts from the maxilla and it runs up runs up runs up extends up to the up to the roof of the nose roof of the nose that is almost in the base of the skull okay extends up to the roof of the nose and then makes a turn makes a turn cuts the part of the orbit and comes to the other side comes to the other side of the maxilla okay and then it makes a three dimensional uh, breaks the pterygoid plate breaks the pterygoid plate and makes a three dimensional cut at the back okay it makes a three dimensional cut okay it breaks the pterygoid plate and bisects into two okay this is leaf foot type 2 fracture which is otherwise called as how is it like it's like a Egypt pyramid so it is called as pyramidal fracture okay so type 1 it is also called as transverse fractures or Guerin fracture type 2 pyramidal fracture type 3 very dangerous very very dangerous type 3 type 3 is called as say here what happens what happens the fracture line starts from the lateral canthus okay it goes into the orbit bisects the orbital uh, orbital cavity comes up to the medial canthus up to the roof of the nose and then the same thing on the other side and then it goes along this infratemporal fossa it bisects this area and, and bisects the skull base like this okay so this is called as this is called as type 3 is called as craniofacial disjunction craniofacial disjunction 
So, it is separating the cranial cavity and the facial cavity, okay. Craniofacial disjunction, LIFO type 3 fractures, LIFO type 3 very, very dangerous. So, type 1, type 2, type 3, these 3 are very important image based scenario, type 1, type 2, type 3, okay. Type 1 transverse, type 2 pyramidal, type 3 craniofacial disjunction, okay. A very important one, very important one, the very important image based question for your exams, the LIFO fractures. Okay. So, what are the clinical features the patient is going to present in a leaf foot fracture? In a leaf foot fracture, the patient is going to present with obviously the patient will would have been had a severe road traffic accident following which there will be some uh, there, there can be some soft tissue injuries over the face. Along with that, the patient will be having a severe edema, there can be ecchymosis over that area, right? Uh, there will be edema, edema will be there, edema, ecchymosis, right, and there can be some soft tissue injuries over there over the face soft tissue injuries along with that along with that now the fracture line say in a leaf foot type 2 and leaf foot type 3 the fracture line is almost involving the orbital area also the, it has involved full of the maxilla so so the so there can be involvement of which now here which now here as we discussed in a blowout fracture there can be involvement of the infra orbital nerve so once the infra orbital nerve is involved then the patient may have loss of sensation over the loss of sensation over the area supplied by this nerve, okay. So, infraorbital nerve can be involved and the main thing what we want to know is regarding the CSF rhinorrhea. So, CSF rhinorrhea, CSF rhinorrhea can occur in which types of leaf foot fracture, very important question for your neat exam, which types of leaf foot fracture, will it occur in type 1, obviously no, type 1 is here, okay, the type 2, type 3 are here, okay. Uh, CSF rhinorrhea will occur in a type 2 and type 3 types of leaf foot fractures not in a type 1 fracture, okay. So, so the ideal treatment, so obviously we are going to investigate the patient, we are going to take a CT facial bones and here as I said in the first thing, we need a 3D reconstruction, 3D reconstruction as the radiologist to give a 3 dimensional reconstruction to check which part of the fracture segments are being fractured, okay. The ideal treatment here is the treatment here we cannot do a closed reduction, here we need a open reduction and an internal fixation. Okay, we need to go ahead with the open reduction along with internal fixation. The internal fixation may be a fixation with a screw and a, with a screw with a screw hole and a plate. Okay, so this is the ideal treatment. So leaf foot fractures. What you want to know is regarding the it is very dangerous. The types of leaf foot fracture one, two, and three very very important. Okay.